Today is January 5th. It's the fifth day of the year, and this is the On This Day podcast. Today is National Whipped Cream Day here in the United States. Yum. It is, of course, a day to celebrate that delicious dessert topping and to raise awareness of whipped cream in general. On average, four out of five people don't consume enough whipped cream and instead scoop it off the top of whatever tasty treat it adorns. While Whipped Cream Day is not a federal holiday or official bank holiday, it is legally permissible to liberally apply whipped cream to all of your meals today, not just desserts or mocha coffees. And that is an acceptable way to observe Whipped Cream Day, no matter what diet you started for your New Year's resolution. Today is also the earliest day in the year on which people begin breaking their New Year's resolutions. In 1969, the United States lands a man on the moon, fulfilling the challenge posed by the late President Kennedy at the beginning of the decade. It's an incredible accomplishment, one that many assumed was impossible. Some still think it's impossible, that the moon landing was all a hoax filmed on a Hollywood stage, but then again, some people still think Elvis is alive. After doing the impossible, the question for NASA, the question for America, is what next? On this day in 1972, President Richard Nixon announces the next phase of the American space program, saying, quote, I have decided today that the United States should proceed at once with the development of an entirely new type of space transportation system, designed to help transform the space frontier of the 1970s into familiar territory, easily accessible for human endeavor in the 1980s and 90s. This system will center on a space vehicle that can shuttle repeatedly from Earth to orbit and back. It will revolutionize transportation into near space by routinizing it. As early as the 1950s, the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, the NACA, or NACA, NASA's predecessor, they begin working on the concept of a spacecraft capable of a horizontal landing upon its return from space. The Air Force also works on designs for a reusable spacecraft. Any number of these experimental vehicles in the 1950s and 60s were surely at one time or another mistaken for a UFO. In the late 1960s, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, the NASA that we know and love, NASA begins designing a variety of concepts for the shuttle to ferry astronauts and cargo to a low-Earth orbit space station to shuttle them to a moon base even to shuttle humans to Mars. As the Apollo mission winds down after several trips to the moon in the early 1970s, NASA presents these concepts for the shuttle and the shuttle program goals to the National Aeronautics and Space Council and to the President. Nixon and the Council are in agreement on what the next phase of the space program should be. And on this day in 1972, he announces his decision to pursue a shuttle program for low-Earth orbit spaceflight by a reusable vehicle with the intention of building a low-Earth orbit space station at a later date, once there's enough money to do that. Rather than focusing the nation's time, energy, and money on aiming to achieve the impossible, another giant leap for mankind, such as landing the first human on Mars, Nixon decides that space endeavors should be a continuing process, an ongoing evolution that will eventually become a matter of routine, if no less challenging. In 1970, Nixon says, quote, What we do in space from here on in must become a normal and regular part of our national life. The development of the space shuttle program is estimated to cost about $5 billion dollars. It's no surprise that there are cost overruns in the years that follow, and the total cost to develop the shuttle ends up being closer to $7 billion. And it ends up costing far more than anticipated just to launch the shuttle, which costs half a billion to a billion dollars per launch. But you know, the price of gas these days. After President Nixon announces the space shuttle program on this day in 1972, a prototype shuttle is built named Enterprise. Enterprise is used in 1977 for atmospheric tests, gliding, and landing tests. 
The first space shuttle launched is Columbia in 1981. Columbia is followed by Challenger, Discovery, Atlantis, and Endeavour. Challenger and Columbia will be lost in mission accidents in 1986 and 2003. And the space shuttle program is formally retired after 30 years in 2011. And since then, you can get a close-up look at one of the retired space shuttles. The prototype Enterprise is on display at the Intrepid Sea Air Space Museum in New York City on the Hudson River near 46th Street. You can see Endeavour in Los Angeles at the California Science Center. Atlantis at the Kennedy Space Center in Cape Canaveral, Florida, and Discovery at the Smithsonian Air and Space Annex in Chantilly, Virginia. There are 360 days left in the year. On This Day is produced by me, Dave Schultz. Thank you very much for listening. On this day, 1933, construction begins on the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. It will take 389,000 cubic yards of concrete, 80,000 miles of wire strands, and 11 years to complete the bridge that connects San Francisco and Marin County. So if you're still listening, hold the whip. Talk to you tomorrow.